Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fragrant Bunker. Today we're going to do the top five Chanel perfumes for the month of April. Look at this gorgeous little backdrop mm, that I prompted uh, my AI bubbles to generate. This is, I wanted um, a romantic, romanticized, almost kind of aquarelle mixed with oil painting pastel colors of April showers and kind of the clouds are about to go away. We're going to get a little bit of sun uh, in this landscape, but of course we also have the rain. I mean, April is famous for rain, April showers. So my Chanel selection for this year, 2024, uh, for April is... Uh, mixed in with with this feel of pastels and uh powdery tones but mixed in with water and, and showers a little bit of humidity mixed in with dryness as well so it's a it's a very very tumultuous kind of state olfactively speaking but at the same time it's uh it's a it's a landscape in which um nature is alive and we are very hopeful for the future even though we might maybe wait make wake up a couple of days a week thinking oh gosh really is it going to rain again but that rain is the promise of life because then the more it rains now and the greener and better and less dry the summer will be so in a way it's kind of you know what i mean it's a give and take so anyway uh let's get to the first perfume first subscribe to my channel if you haven't already here on the tubes um you can also push the join button next to the subscription button, become a member today, gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Deco, all spelled together there as well for extra perks. This video uh, is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream several times a week on my main channel, so come join me there for the chats. So, you guys, this is where it's at. <clears throat> the first one is is a classic okay you can wear it all year round but i just love me that vibe of april gray skies maybe it just rained maybe it didn't maybe you just spent the night somewhere you know and i as i say this you know immediately if you know my channel you know what i'm talking about uh the walk of shame the morning after <sighs> i don't know it's just so poetic in april also in may but uh here it is, uh, Paris Paris by Chanel from the Les Eaux range, uh, the waterlets. Uh, it's in eau de toilette, even though they were supposed to be to colognes. I kid you not. Okay, so this damask rose with patchouli is, uh, it's a masterpiece. And I was saying, I kid you not, this is, <laughs> after years of testing out all my Chanel perfumes, I don't know if this is sad to say or if this is something good to say, but of all my Chanel perfumes, including Chanel Number no. 5 Extra, this one, longest longevity on my skin. Okay, I don't know. My chemistry at the moment is the way it is, so maybe it's not going to be the same way in a year or in a couple of months or in a couple of weeks. I might completely change the way that I perceive these perfumes, but this one? You spray it on the next day i still smell it on my clothes it goes on for days on the skin it it lasts overnight this is a, a beast and i mean it's a leso range right so it's kind of all of these are a little bit light especially paris biarritz that one i mean 10 minutes in and it's gone from the skin but paris paris lasts and lasts and lasts so it, if you want longevity in a rose fragrance with patchouli, this is yours. Uh, and it's a beautiful pink hue. You can't really see very well. Uh, maybe if I put it next to my skin, I, there you see it, how pink it is. It's a beautiful pinky hue, very Chanel pink. Uh, it, it's a rose after all, so let's spray it on a little bit. Oh man, such a beauty. Mm. And and it's 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 antique, you know, damask rose is a, it's um powdery rose you know dusty almost and it, and it gives you an ancient vibe of having discovered having had a roll in the hay in the attic in some old mansion in paris somewhere and then like you know <laughs> you 
you spent the night with somebody and then the next morning you're finding your way out of the building and you're walking back to the subway or home or whatever. <sighs> Enough said. And as spring is here, you know, all our hormones are coming up. Everything is brewing. We are like little tiny bees buzzing around. So you need a perfume that matches that mood. Definitely Paris Paris. Now, the second one is wet, somehow wet and dry at the same time. We're going to have orris root and iris. Orris root is the tuber of the iris. So uh, we got, I want to say this one is sublime for a rainy day in Paris, in Paris, <laughs> anywhere you are, but it's sublime on a rainy day in April. Here we got La Pausa by Chanel from the Les Exclusives range. Let's layer. Now, I know some perfumers don't like to layer and they say it's disrespectful to the, to the perfumer. Well, <laughs> what's this respect? They're all Olivier Polge, so whatever. We'll go, we'll go. Uh, okay, La Pausa is one of the big loves of my life. I went through four bottles of... Three or four bottles of even 28 La Pausa when it was Eau de Toilette, right? And then La Pausa, I, I adore it. And uh, the more it ages, the, the darker the juice turns. Look at this beautiful. Hmm. Again, a very pastel. If rain had a color, it would be a pastel La Pausa vibe. Um, so... La Pausa is Coco Chanel's villa right, in the south of France, and she named it La Pausa, also because in Italian La Pausa means to take a break. It's kind of a place where also Winston Churchill uh, used to go to visit Coco, or he would spend some time on his own there just to chill, relax a little bit, you know, they used to be friends. And La Pausa was Chanel's escape to nicer places. Now, uh, it is also said that during the German occupation of France, WW2, uh, that uh, La Pausa was used to hide the uh, resistance, the French resistance. Now, we have to say allegedly. Everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's alleged in just my opinion. So you can imagine there's also this fighting zest inside of this perfume. It's kind of, you know, the silent beast of the Les Exclusives range, but at the same time, it, it holds that secret, you know? La, La Pausa is like this nature. It's, it's brewing, it's foreboding in a way, and then, you know, the rain starts falling, and, and there's this feeling and vibe of energy, you know, but hidden, just like the Resistance, right, in this building in the south of France. It, this perfume is not the first one you're going to recognize from the Chanel range, from the Les Exclusives range. This is not going to be the Les Exclusives fragrance that most people veer towards when they first discover this collection. And so you're going to have to contemplate, <laughs> you know, discover all the facets of the Les Exclusives range until you hit this one at a certain point on your trajectory through these perfumes. Unfortunately, the Les Exclusives range has become so expensive. And since, you know, they keep releasing new ones, albeit not every year and not several a year like other perfume houses do, uh, Chanel waits a couple of years before they release a new one. So technically one could wait, you know, save up the money if one is a little bit in a pinch. And then when they release a new one, if you like the new one, you can purchase it. But what I want to say is they got 18 and now 19 with Comet, 19 perfumes. It's a lot. Like to buy all 19 of them in the 200 mil bottles, even in the 75 mil bottles, it's a lot. So some people might not also live nearby a Chanel beauty boutique. It's hard to sniff on these. It's not like Chanel just sends you samples of all of them for free. You know, it's hard to get to these. So I can... Imagine how it might be hard for some people to really go on this discovery journey of all 19 of them, because you really need to go on that discovery journey to find your way to La Pausa, 
you know it's not the first one that jumps out at you it, it's it's a silent it's a gentle giant let's just put it that way it's a giant but uh it's living up in the cloud you you need jack and the and the beanstalk or what's it called you know you're going to need to plant that bean and get that huge vine to grow into the clouds to find la pausa that gentle giant living on the clouds and and once you have discovered it of course you fall in love with it i mean it's it's such a beautiful beautiful orris root fragrance and christopher sheldrake who uh, 20, designed uh, created 28 la pausa together with jacques polge uh, 28 la pausa you know there was an interview once and they said in the interview that uh, the orris root that they utilized is something that is very important to them there's an overdose of orris root here uh, olivier polge maintained the orris root in the transition from edt to edp and they said, well, with orris root, what is so beautiful, it starts off silent, you see, like a silent giant, right? And then as time progresses, the orris root warms up on the skin and starts kind of it melting from, from this dry powder accord. It, it turns into this mm, buttery texture that then turns into this floral accord. And orris root is iris, basically, it's, a, it's the same plant. And then it starts blooming on the skin. So technically, uh, what Sheldrake said in this interview many, many years ago is that with orris root, you put it on your skin. You can't smell it at the beginning. It's kind of like the opposite, the anti, the reverse psychology of a perfume, because usually perfume you spray it on. Yes, there's the, you know, uh, top mid base notes and then it fades out and perfume is over and he says well with orris root if it's the good quality orris root the good dosage good combination composition orris root starts off silent like it's the end of the perfume of its trajectory in your skin and then it goes reverse like uh, benjamin button <laughs> you know what i mean and it kind of intensifies and amplifies the more it stays on the skin and it just becomes more and more voluminous and that's what La Pausa does. So it's it's one of those perfumes you have to discover. So it's kind of nature that bursts from within, slowly, silently, but consistently, and uh, makes you feel very safe as well because it's, it's solid. It's a solid perfume. So there you have it. Beautiful, beautiful for April. Man, oh, gorgeous, really. Number three... In case you want to get married in April, you need a wedding ring. And look at this. For those of you who don't know, the chance, this is Ovive in particular. I chose Ovive this year. There you have the Ovive logo right there, the insignia. Uh, the chance bottle and the chance flankers all have this design with the metal circle. It's kind of the only Chanel bottle that isn't square. Hmm. Not anymore because they kind of brought out the lezus, which are also kind of rounded off, but they're not completely circular. These recall a 30s and 40s Chanel Cologne bottle. So this is kind of reminiscent of uh, 30s, 40s Chanel aesthetics. These are beautiful bottles, by the way. But this chance to take the chance means also, you know, also to get married, like bon chance. You, you would tell somebody like uh, good fortune as they're getting married or if they're going on some new endeavor, you know, or if they're getting engaged. So chance was born as a bottle that signifies and symbolizes a ring, a wedding ring or an engagement ring in this case with a diamond on top. So we got the metal circle around the bottle and we got that stopper that symbolizes the diamonds it's like an engagement ring and when you uh, become engaged with somebody you kind of you know say bon chance but anyway so that's the beauty of this bottle for those of you who haven't noticed the things we learn in every episode talking about chanel perfumes mm, i adore ovive ovive doesn't get all the love it should you know of all of the other chance flankers this is the only one that still did not receive an eau de parfum update so it's only available as an eau de toilette as of now and uh this is the uh only chance flanker that olivier polge created the other ones were made by his father jacques so i don't have any more space oh my gosh okay the beauty of this fragrance, this is the most complex, believe it or not, of all the flankers, of all the Chance flankers, and it does not get the love it deserves. So we start with, of course, aldehydes, aldehydes, aldehydes. All of the Chance flankers have them. Mm. 
but there's just something my mouth is watering there's just something about oviv it starts off with a sicilian blood orange and that blood orange is it's it's so juicy you can smell that red inside of i love blood oranges okay i love the, the texture of them to eat them you know the, the skin it's it's kind of orangey sprinkled with red dots usually or kind of semi red semi orange and then the inside the pulp and the juice some of those little pustules that are inside of the the orange are orange and some are red and it's just such a beautiful fruit really so zesty and fresh and effervescent. I mean, it's a burst of, of fresh blood orange juice in the morning, really. And then as it develops, it kind of drifts into sandalwood. This thing really, of all of the Sean's uh, fragrances and flankers, this is the only one that really does not stay linear on the skin, you know. I mean, the original Chance has a bit of a trajectory, sure. But then Otendre, as gorgeous as it is, and Otendre is the most famous of the Chance fragrances, it's even more popular these days than the Chance, Chance, and the OG. But Otendre stays relatively linear. That particular rose accord in Otendre maintains that solid state throughout the lifespan of the fragrance. Gorgeous on the skin, but it is what it is. <laughs> you know, the and uh, au fraiche, fresh, zesty, you know, there's, there's some woods in there as well, but it, it stays quite citrusy green. Ovive goes from that blood orange, of course, there's more accords in here, but just to give you an idea, it of also, I'm gonna explain to you now why I chose this in April. From that zesty, wet, refreshing showers in April, a blood orange, we go into that dry, beautiful, balmy sandalwood in the dry down, which is then this, this area here of our painting where the clouds start dissipating and we slowly get into that beautiful, sunny, dry, dreamy vibe, still slightly humid from the, from the rain, but uh, we are indeed in a drier atmosphere, and that's the sandalwood. Mm. And it smells so clean and to the point, and it, it kind of combats that humidity that you can sometimes have in April because it's, it's a fragrance that keeps you clean. It doesn't smell necessarily of like clean, like many perfumes do. This one, it's more sophisticated than that. It's a beauty, it's a beauty, and it's such a pity that uh, it doesn't get uh, more love. There you go. That's Chanson Vive Eau de Toilette. The fourth fragrance, by the way, thumb up this video if you're enjoying it thus far. Thank you. It means the world to me and it also helps out the algorithm in my channel. Subscribe as well. And while we're talking about Chanel, you can also follow me on my uh, Chanel dedicated Instagram account. It's a fan account I have where I take a lot of photos of my collection and everything I love about Chanel and I share it on my Instagram account. And that Instagram account is called Jacob CC, all spelled together. So check me out there. I have a lot of perfume uh, photos there as well. So number four is uh, again an iris. Okay. An iris accord, uh, galba galbanum uh, vibes uh, as well in this one. And a little bit less than the OG. This is a flanker, but it is a beauty, very powdery. This one, even though it's very green and it's April, so we need a little bit of green. It's also very, very powdery and soft and smooth. And that would be Chanel number 19, Poudre. It's very hard to see because they do not have a sticker on this one, but rather a uh, frosted glass. So you can see it a little bit in contrast on the glossy bottle. And uh, this is an Eau de Parfum concentration. Jacques Polge is the nose behind this one. Such a beauty, a, a dry, powdery, makeup-y, makeup -y accord. Very delicate, also not given a lot of love and attention. You know, it's very rarely spoken about. And uh, it, it doesn't make the lists, the top lists very often, really. But I thought, you know what? This one deserves a spot 
this year in, in April instead of its, you know, other bigger sister and brother, which would be Chanel number no, or, or and cousins, Chanel number no. 19 parfum or de parfum or de toilette. Those are of course the big ones. This one kind of always walks in their shadow very shyly. But no, today, this month, number 19 uh, Poudre takes center stage and leaves all the brothers and sisters behind. Ha! There you go. Oh, such a gorgeous flanker. I mean, this is how this is how you do a good flanker, okay? It's a beauty. It's really, really a beauty. Yes, it has the DNA of Chanel number no. 19. Chanel number no. 19 is perfect for spring in general. You know what I mean? March, April, May, all of those months. It's a gorgeous fragrance. I mean, whether it be eau de parfum, eau de toilette, parfum, you know, it's just there's something sophisticated about Chanel number no. 19. It's a beautiful chipre that just takes you there. It really elevates you, elevates your whole posture, elevates the whole mood surrounding you. I mean, it's a beautiful fragrance. And Poudre is a little bit less arrogant than its, you know, counterparts, <laughs> the OGs, because they have a little bit more of that, I don't need anybody. You know, that's Chanel number no. 19 is like hyper sophisticated, independent. This one is a little bit more prone and open. This one is kind of the cousin coming from the countryside into the big city and delivering zest, but being a little bit less arrogant. So that's the beauty of kind of of this particular year and this particular landscape, because I was, you know, envisioning more um, and I'm in need more of a friendlier Chanel number no. 19 this year. In general, I'm kind of more in a mood for friendlier people. Uh, friendlier encounters. I've I've had a couple really weird encounters lately where, you know, you, on the phone you have something to solve, some bureaucracy to deal with, some questions about, you know, services that you're applying to, whether it be insurances, taxes, what have you. And then I've noticed lately that, uh, at least in the year 2024, a lot of these people on the phone, they're very aggressive and they're very unfriendly, unpolite, and they want to kind of prove you wrong at any cost, no matter, you know, no matter what you're asking for, even if you're not asking for any change in your contracts or anything, it's just this attitude I'm noticing, it's very, very aggressive. Uh, and I'm like, oh, we need people, we need to become social again. Okay. Three years of lockdowns have messed with so many people. They have become, it's like they unlearned to, to deal with other human beings. It's like they're, they're no longer social creatures. They're very rude. Uh, they they have become, uh, at least in their behavioral patterns, they behave very uneducated and aggressive. It just this has to stop, you guys. Really tone it down. So this kind of perfume is my little hope for a, a little bit more toned down vibe this spring. And number five. Number five is very sophisticated and very wet. <laughs> number five is maybe... We're going to have to maybe go here into this garden, into the woods over there, or maybe more on this side. And we're going to have to kind of go deeper into the, the forests there. Or maybe, maybe we're going to have to go the mountains there, somewhere deeper into the woods where it's very humid, where there's like a mossy vibe. And we're going to start digging and we're going to try to look for vetiver. And vetiver or vetiver is the main component together with violets and this is why we also have a little bit a hint of purple hues here and there maybe there's a couple of violets growing somewhere on the side there we don't know but vetiver and violets what else can it be but sycamore and uh, i have chosen the extrait of sycamore uh, this year let's put it on i'm very excited Oh, man. The problem with these, though, you know, is that the more you use them, and I, I love the tactile experience of actually really using the dabber to apply them, then you get all that kind of dusty dirt inside of them. That's just the nature of the beast. They, they get dirty. They get all your little skin <laughs> and dust particles in, in the liquid. And uh, it's just it's just part of the game, you guys. You know, un unfortunately... Um, Oh. live with it. Let me also dab a little bit on my wrist here because I want to smell it up close. Oh, man. 
oh, it's so warm, but wet and deep, dark, not as dark as the other parfum or as the, as the other toilet, but it, it, it has, it's a little bit more, again, friendlier. And this is, again, my wish. I, I wish, you know, <sighs> I wish the world were a friendlier place. So Sycamore Extra is the friendliest version of Sycamore, you know. Of, of all the three concentrations that we have, even though the Eau de Toilette is no longer in production. And the Vetiver gives you a specific vibe. Back in the day, when the Eau de Toilette was in production and the first batches of the Eau de Toilette, they were very intense. The Vetiver was very, very wet. It's like you pulled that root out of the ground and it still had all the soil attached to it, the humidity, and you could smell the soil. Then 2016 came along, Chanel discontinued the Eau de Toilettes. But before they discontinued the other toilets, the other toilets, they started kind of watering them down and reformulating them. And people were complaining like, hey, longevity is meh. And then they use that as an excuse, just my humble opinion here, everything's alleged, of course, uh, to kind of say, okay, we're going to reformulate everything as Eau de Parfums. And then they use that excuse to up the prices a lot. But the Eau de Parfums, the first release of the Eau de Parfums was not good for me. I did not like Sycamore Eau de Parfum in the beginning. Now... It seems like they are more and more reformulating and tweaking it. Now the Eau de Parfum starts smelling more and more like the Eau de Toilette used to smell. But of course, for double the price. <laughs> because, you know, that's how we do. But um, but it's still... The friendliest version of Sycamore is is the Extrait. Okay. And, and you get this... It, I mean, first of all, stays very close to the skin. Do not expect a projection beast. Yes, this costs a lot. And you're going to think, I'm paying so much for this, but it doesn't even project. It doesn't last so much. It does not. It just doesn't. It doesn't last so much on the skin. Uh, it does not project. It stays very close to the skin. That's just how Chanel perfumes are. Especially that's how Chanel Extrait uh, pure perfumes, the parfums react. That's how they behave. They don't project. They're usually very, very intimate. They're for your own pleasure, for your own self, for a little pick-me-up moment, applying it before going to bed. You know, there's a lot going around the notion of, well, I'm spending, if I am spending a lot of money for a perfume, I want it to last for 10 hours or 20 hours on my skin. Um, you know, Coco Chanel used to say when she was alive, and she gave a television interview. She gave very few interviews because, I mean, you know, by the time television was a thing, she was already quite old and... Uh, you know, so we didn't, unfortunately, we didn't get many television interviews with Coco, but the ones we did get were amazing. And in one of those interviews, she did say, you know, perfume, and this is back in the 50s and 60s, you guys, when there were no regulations not allowing you to put a ton of oak moss in a fragrance, real civet, castor, castoreum, you know, all that, all the good stuff. Amber Greed, you do whatever you want. You know what I mean? Those were the days. So even back in those days when you could still purchase Cuir de Russie and it was something else than what it is today. Chanel Number no. 5 was something else than what it is today. Still back in the day, she would say, you know, perfume doesn't have to be intense in her interview. So her perfumes were intense. I'm just telling you this. It's not like she was trying to justify the fact that her perfumes were waterlets. No, no. Her perfumes were very intense. But regardless, she said, you know... They don't have to be. You do not have to wear a heavy perfume that lasts, you know, forever. It can be something delicate, something that just slightly, you know, vibrates off the skin close to you. Just kind of a whisper. And that's enough. And that already is enough because it's your character that, that should dominate the clothing as well as the fragrance, not the other way around. She had a very elegant vision of how you are to, you know, dress and how you are to enjoy fragrances. So if we listen to that and we kind of translate that into today's times, uh, Sycamore is a beautiful perfume. It delivers exactly that, that elegant, subtle whisper. Reminding me, you know, to tone it down, take it easy, chill, embrace nature as it comes, embrace life as it comes, and move it. <laughs> move along, baby. Move along, you know, get it going. And hopefully others will also follow because if you have the right energy, usually it emanates onto others. And it's kind of, you, you, you got to be strong, though, obviously. 
not too passive because otherwise others kind of overcome you but lead the way and if you are more cool and calm and collected others usually also calm down and then you know you start a movement and then everybody's calm oh wouldn't that be amazing for once so anyway that is my number five for the month of april for uh not my fifth fragrance uh my fifth chanel fragrance for the month of april 2024 i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have thumb it up subscribe let me know your thoughts and what your favorite uh, chanel perfumes are or i don't want to say top five it doesn't have to be five it can be just one it can be 20 whatever you know what i mean what are your favorite chanel perfumes for this month let me know in the comment section down below until next time never forget to never give up on love take care subscribe bye